Welcome. Jumping into Premiere from the Media Composer interface can be a little uh, confusing at times, but actually the Premiere interface is super, super flexible and really, really easy to customize the way you want it to. Premiere doesn't have like hard-coded modes that you can switch the sequence and switch your interface into. It's basically designed around the idea of panels and the ability to move and place those panels wherever you want on the screen, and then create a grouping of those panels, which we call a workspace, and treat that workspace layout as a specific tasked layout for any type of job. Let's jump into the interface and I'll give you a quick overview. So over here in Premiere, to start with, I'm currently on the edit uh, tab up at the top. There are these special hard-coded panels for both import, edit, and then for export as well. But for this video, we're gonna to stick to the edit workspace or the edit interface that we're working in here. When you look at the Premiere interface, you'll see that all the panels are kind of docked together and you can see that I can grab this line in between these two uh, source and record monitors or source and program monitors um, to kind of adjust the interface on an as needed basis. Um, each of these areas on the screen, the source monitor, the program monitor, the timeline that I have open or sequence that I have open, the project that I have open, as well as these additional tabs that you see here, these are all panels. Now panels are placed in the window menu and you can see by the checkboxes which panels I currently have open. If I need to get to the markers panel and I don't happen to remember where I have it docked, I can always come in here and select it and that will take me to that panel so that I can then start working within that panel. Um, you'll also see that there are these two little chevrons at the side here. If you have too many panels open in a given area where there's not enough room for tabs, they'll automatically be placed in this little uh, drop down menu here on the right hand edge. Now, whenever you want to move a panel around, it's super easy. You just have to find the tab at the top of the panel, and that lets you actually move the panel to a different part of the interface. So let me go ahead and grab the Media Browser tab here, and I can start to drag this up, and you'll see this little purple overlay that forms over this grouping of tabs that I have up here where the source monitor is. If I want to move the Media Browser into this same area and have it form as a tab up the top, I can drag it and drop it right into the center. And you can see that that has now dropped the Media Browser into that center section there. Now, if I didn't want to put it in that location, I'll reset the interface here. And you can see now the Media Browser is back where it was before in the bottom half here. Let's say I wanted to create a new area on the screen just to the left of the source monitor. I can take the Media Browser tab, drag it up, and then drag it over to this left-hand edge. And when I let go of the mouse now, you'll see that the source monitor and the all the different tabs associated with the source monitor are now kind of crammed into the right-hand side of the interface. And a new area has opened up where the Media Browser tab is currently found. If I wanted to then redock it and reclaim that real estate into the same area, I can just drag that Media Browser browser tab into the center of the uh, source monitor area. And you can see now that uh, section of the screen has now kind of consolidated. It's now uh, all of these are now tabbed in the same part of the real estate on the screen. So you can move panels around. You can create your own layouts of these panels. Now to create a workspace or a workspace layout, in the window menu, under workspaces, you'll see that there is a list of different workspaces that are listed up here at the top. The majority of these are factory default workspaces, and you can't modify a factory workspace, but you can use it as sort of a jumping off point to start to build the workspace that you wanna use. So I've started in the editing workspace, and this of course is uh, one of the factory defaults, but I'm going to create a new workspace right now. By coming down here to the bottom, I can choose Save as New Workspace. And in this case, I'm just going to call this one Carl, and I'll go ahead and click OK. And now this is a new saved workspace. 
Now up at the top of the screen on the same bar with the import edit export functions, you'll see a little uh, button here for workspaces. This is another way to quickly get into your list of workspaces. And more than that, I also like to show the workspace tabs in this little segment that you see up here at the top. So this is something that I can shrink down or grow so that I have kind of at my fingertips a bunch of different workspaces to pick from. Again, there's nothing super special about these workspaces other than the fact that they are a grouping of various panels designed to handle a specific task. Now, if you like to work with floating panels, you can always break a panel out and make it a floating panel. For example, if I wanted to take my audio clip mixer and make the audio clip mixer uh, something that is a floating panel, I could go ahead and click on the little flyout or hamburger menu in uh, the tab at the top and choose undock panel. And when I do that, you'll see that this gets a little operating system flash or chrome at the top here with the little uh, closing and minimizing buttons. And now I have a floating panel over the top of my screen real estate. If I wanna dock it, again, all I have to do is grab it from the name and you can see immediately I have the ability to pick and choose exactly where I want to dock this into the rest of the interface. And we'll go ahead and put it back where I had it. Now, there are a, uh, a number of other things working with the uh, workspaces, just to note. First off, the list at the top here is something that you can actually control. You can choose the order in which these items appear in this drop uh, drop down menu, you can also pick and choose the order of them at the top. It kind of is the same order. This is showing top to bottom. This is showing left to right. If I come down here and click on edit workspaces, I can see which ones show up in the menu. And then I can also have additional workspaces that I don't want to have in the menu. I don't want to delete these just yet. I might use them on occasion, but I want to keep the list at the top fairly nimble of what I want to work with. So maybe I'm done with the learning workspace. I might want to move this down into the do not show area. And then if the Caro workspace is something I use pretty regularly, I might want to put that all the way at the top of the list. As soon as I click OK on this, you'll see that this list has now reordered with Carl at the beginning of it. And so now to switch between any workspace, I can just go ahead and click on any of these different names and you'll see that this brings up these different workspaces. I'll go ahead and click through a couple of these just to show how you know the audio one kind of brings a lot of the audio functionality front and center. The text-based editing workspace brings the text panel up to the front. And this also remembers if you have gone in and made any changes to these workspaces recently, and it will bring and remember that information back. So for example, in uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now, I have the production panel next to the text panel because I was doing something that required working with a bunch of different projects, treating those projects as bins, and I wanted to have both the production and the text panel open at the same time. If you ever want to get a workspace back to its last saved state, you can simply double click on the name of this and this will actually reset it back to the factory setting. Uh, another way of doing that is also found in the workspace menu. You can see this option here called reset to saved layout. That in effect is what I'm doing when I select a workspace here and then I double click on the word editing or the name of the workspace, it resets this to the factory default. So I hope this quick video just gives you a quick overview of how to customize the user experience inside of Premiere. It's infinitely flexible how you like to work, where you like to have different controls, and you can use this spanning across multiple monitors. You can actually create a completely separate group of panels uh, that can be a separate floating window. And that's often a common way that I see people editing in Premiere across multiple monitors is they may have their source record monitors and their bins sort of laid out on one monitor. And then they might use a, a, a separate monitor as just for sequences and have multiple sequences open. It really just depends on how you like to work. Thanks for watching.